Hello! In this video, I'm going to do something which may seem impossible. I'm going to take one poem and tell you that it will fit every single question that could come up. So if you're feeling risky, this is the only poem you have to revise for power and conflict. I wouldn't recommend just revising one, but if you want to take this as a 2024 prediction video, go ahead because it will work. So first, what is that poem? It is checking out my history. And I'm going to show you first how it will fit any single exam question that has ever come up. First, you need to know the Mr. Sally's method. So my method is you're always going to write about the form of the poem or the structure if you want top grades. If you don't want grade seven and above, you don't have to write about form and structure. Then you're always going to write about the O, the opening, then an image that is a technique, a metaphor or simile or what have you, then another image which is a technique, and then the ending of the poem. That will give you everything you need for your analysis of checking out the history to get the top grades. Once you've done all that, then you're going to pick the named poem that appears in the exam paper. So let's see how this would work by looking at all the previous named poems. Let's go through these a quote at a time. Back to my checking out my history page. I'm going to write about the interesting form of this poem. You'll notice it's written in two different ways. So the poet speaks in his own dialect. Dem tell me, dem tell me. But when he's writing about the British experience or the European experience, he introduces a childish rhythm with rhyming couplets. Dem tell me about 1066 and all that. He's making fun of it. So if we look at these two types of form and structure, one celebrates the rhythm and rhyme of what he sees as the superior society, the society that's been oppressed by Europeans. And then he's making fun of the Europeans and calling them childlike and simplistic. That marries with his message that there is a simplistic history that's been imposed on these people who've been colonised. The structure of bayonet charge is free verse, and that reflects the freedom that the soldier wants in escaping from war. In Ozymandias, it's tightly controlled iambic pentameter, 10 syllables, and that reflects the control that Ozymandias the tyrant wanted to have over his subjects and over his historical reputation. In War Photographer, we have several instances of sing-song, which is similar to checking out my history. And in both poems, it's like a lament. They're both regretting the past. In War Photographer, the difference is that the photographer is regretting their own part in that past, Whereas in Checking Out My History, the narrator is regretting what his people, what his ancestors, have been subjected to by white Europeans. In Remains, again, we have free verse. This is symbolic of the freedom that the narrator has in trying to escape the memories, the nightmares of his guilt, what he has done in the war. In London, very tightly controlled syllable pattern and rhyme to reflect the way that London has become an oppressive city, repressing its citizens politically and religiously and morally. In My Last Duchess, the monologue is in ten syllables, iambic pentameter, reflecting the extreme desire to control exhibited by the Duke, which we see in his obsession with art and in his control and possible assassination of wives. So really easy to match to any of the poems. When we've done the form, we're already into grade seven and above territory. Now we go to the most significant line in the opening of the poem. I'll show you here because the reflections are pretty difficult, but we've got this idea of bandage up me eye with me own history, blind me to my own identity. So let's see if this was about war, how would this link? Well, of course, it is a warlike state that has led to slavery. People have been taken at gunpoint and 
then shipped across the Atlantic and enslaved, many of them dying in the process, casualties of war. Ideas of power, easy. We've obviously got the image of slavery, but we've also got the political power of modern history, rewriting history from the point of view of Europeans and excluding the black experience and the success of black leaders, which he is trying to redress with this poem. People and war. Well, that's a combination of those two. The other person we're going to add in to this, of course, is the narrator himself, who is rewriting his own history by getting to know it, and then by implication, educating his audience, particularly his black audience, to go out and research their own history and celebrate it. Power and control in London, it matches exactly, doesn't it? By the way that society is divided up between those who have power and wealth and those who don't. Power and conflict are therefore covered completely. Experiences of war. And so we've got those with the direct experience. We can now jump into checking out the history and look at those successful war leaders. So Tuisson and Nanny de Maroon. These lines contain two metaphors, so I can write about the effect of that technique, and I can easily find other imagery in the other poem. If it's a metaphor, awesome, but it doesn't have to be. It just has to be other imagery to do with a similar topic, the control of identity, the oppression, and I'm gonna link it to whether that's produced by society or produced by war. My next technique, lick back Napoleon battalion and first black republic born. Why am I gonna pick on that? Well, obviously it's another metaphor with lick back. It's also very colloquial. He's celebrating his own culture, his own dialect. And, but it's also suggesting in this metaphor that beating Napoleon was as easy as licking. It was simple for Tuisson to defeat this great general, this great tyrant, Napoleon, and his battalion. And then you've got Napoleon battalion rhyming together, just one word per line. These emphasise the great achievements in history of black people, which compares, going back to this, the childlike couplets that ridicule the British and European achievements. And then what does he focus on? Not just the military victory, but what that led to, a republic, the first black republic, rejecting monarchy. And you can see how monarchy is a feature of so many of the poems here. And rejecting it is rejecting being controlled by hereditary power. How would these link to ideas of war? Well, these poems are actually anti-war poems, trying to persuade the British readers that war is evil, whereas... War itself is not evil in checking out the history if it's about a people rising up against the oppressors. And so he celebrates those people who have been victorious in that war against oppression. Our next technique is a quote about Mary Seacole, the Florence Nightingale type figure who left from Jamaica to look after the soldiers in the Crimean War. Let's look at the metaphors again. A healing star. This, of course, is also a reference to the Christian star, the star over Bethlehem that lit the way for the wise men to see Jesus. Among the wounded, a yellow sunrise. This, of course, is a reference to the sun in Jamaica being more positive, more warm. But it's also a metaphor for how she's brought that warmth to the colder north and, of course, to her political oppressors, the British. And this happens later in the poem. Agard moves from a state of war to a state of reconciliation and forgiveness. Mary Seacole is giving back. She's sharing her humanity in a way that's going to benefit her oppressors and thereby change their view about the black people they oppress. And so here, I've just got to look at the way society is changed in each of these poems. So in this one, the soldier rejects all idea of empire and king and patriotism. In Ozymandias, 
Shelley rejects the idea of political control and shows that it will be eradicated by the march of time and presumably progress and democracy. In War Photographer, the photographer is desperate to stop the state of war through his photographs, but possibly ends the poem in a state of despair, thinking that this change is not possible, completely unlike Checking Out My History, where change is the whole point of the poem. Similarly, in London, we probably have a sense of despair that the worst thing that's going to happen is the harlot's cry, killing the infant. In other words, husbands are going out, having sex with prostitutes, contracting sexual diseases, and passing that on to their wives and children so that they're born with disabilities and deformities. There isn't a sense of hope so long as we allow this control to the rich. In My Last Duchess, the Duke is able to hold on to his power. He virtually confesses to having murdered his last wife, in a conversation with the representative of the Count who wants the Duke to marry his daughter to become the next wife. So it's a warning, this is what's going to happen to your daughter if you don't get her to do exactly what I say. Terrible, corrupt power which continues because of the monarchy, because of this hereditary system of power. Now we jump to the ending, the ending is always the most important part of a poem because it shows the final view of the poet. And here, it's that he's going to carve out his own identity despite what the people in the country he's living in tell him, what they want to tell him. He instead is carving out his identity. This metaphor again suggests that it's gonna be something permanent. Once you've carved it, it's solid, it's long lasting. It's like Ozymandias' statue, which lasts for hundreds and thousands of years. This is an extreme note of optimism that he wants to pass on to his readers, especially his black readers who are going to carve out their own identity. Well, then we're just going to contrast that to the effects of the endings of these poems. Do they end on a note of despair or a note of optimism? Now, to get the top grade, all you have to do each time you write about these is talk about the writer's purpose. What's the message that the author, the poet, has given us? That's been super clear here. And if you go back over the video, you'll find I've talked about the purpose of all of these poems as well. When you go into the exam, the examiner is not expecting a match of subject matter. So if they set you something about war, and checking out my history isn't obviously a war poem, they won't care so long as you make your comparisons. And that's why I've picked checking out my history, because it is going to fit every possible question that comes up, and that will guarantee you a top grade. A further piece of proof about this is the 2023 examiner's report, which was ecstatic about the number of students who'd watched my video on checking out my history the night before the exam and decided to compare checking out my history to bayonet charge. Proof that this will work no matter what the question. So the next video you need to watch so you can be certain this is the poem you're gonna use to get your top grade.